Uh, I will now introduce the next speaker is Line Eldring. She is active at the uh, Norwegian Institute for Label and Social Research based in Oslo. Many of us know it with the uh, Norwegian acronym FAFO. Uh, Lina has, uh, is, she's a researcher there, a senior researcher, and she's done studies for the uh, Norwegian Ministry of Labour, for the European Trade Union Institute, and also for the uh, Norwegian Trade Union Confederation, LO. I know you have made a very, very interesting ground research as well. You will not have time to present it here, but for further reading, please look up her, her name and look into some very interesting studies. Lina, please, for the country example, Norway. Thank you. Thanks for the invitation. Oh, there seemed to be a problem uh, with the oh, no. with the slides. They are cutting the headlines and the conclusions, so, but otherwise we'll be fine. Uh, in in uh, I'll, like Jens, uh, I'll talk about uh, migration from East and Central Europe. That's uh, when we talk about labor migration in the Norwegian context. That's been. Uh, uh, it's uh, really uh, European labor migration. Uh, okay, in 2004, the Norwegian debate was circling around, uh, well, above all, the issue, will anybody want to come to Norway? Would they rather go to Sweden, for instance, or, or um, to the southern Europe? Uh, other fear that uh, we would have too many migrants, and there was, was also some discussion, very much inspired, I think, by Jöran Persson on, on welfare tourism. Uh, we then opted for transitional restrictions on migration from the new countries, the new East European member countries, just in case. Um, we also had uh, large discussions on the risk of social dumping and some claim that uh, we should rather call it social jumping. So, how did it go? I'm a sociologist, so I like to do it simple. Uh, yeah, it's not possible to do anything with the slides, I guess. Yeah, no. So, uh, the right, uh, the, le the, the red column is the number of uh, of Eastern European citizens uh, settled in Norway in 2004, it's just below 7,000. The green, green one is uh, 2014, uh, we are now above 160,000. In addition, you'll find uh, between 30 and 40,000 employed people not uh, registered in these statistics. Uh, if we um, go to the uh, Nordic countries as such, uh, you will see that uh, Norway really succeeded. We really succeeded in attracting labor migrants. So the fear of everybody going to Sweden was, uh, uh, did not prove right. Uh, but in all the Nordic countries, uh, migration from the east uh, increased and um, when the number is highest in Norway, it's probably because this is a demand-driven migration. And we had a big demand for labor in Norway, uh, not only up until the financial crisis, but actually also in the years after. It should also uh, be said that this is uh, not uh, manageable migration. It's, it's really not the point to discuss how many should come because we are now a part of this open labor market. In addition to, to these numbers, you have uh, then uh, posted workers, uh, non-settled workers in all countries. So this situation, this large amount uh, of uh, new uh, migrants, new workers in the Norwegian labor market has triggered a lot of discussions. In the core of this discussion, you find the term social dumping. Um, these are not, uh, uh, these are words from, from research, from public debates. Uh, again, not so much, the discussion has not focused so much on 
on uh, numbers, like we see when we discuss uh, refugee migra uh, 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 refugee, uh, sorry, asylum seekers, etc. Because this is, yeah, they are coming or not coming uh, anyway. So the large, uh, big question is then, who is threatened by this migration, if anybody? This, the name of this conference is Low Wage Labour Migrants. And uh, I'm a bit puzzled about this because, uh, 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 as one uh, unionist in Norway used to say, well, a migrant who's willing to work for 50 kroner uh, an hour, he's normally willing to work for 150 kroner as well. So, so the, the low wage is not coming with the migrants, they are receiving it when they are in our labor market. So the question whether labor migration poses a threat to the Nordic model sh should maybe be replaced or at least uh, be complemented with the question of whether the model fail in providing and securing uh, labor migrants a decent working life. And then to the core, do our model uh, or our models, are they, uh, can they uh, deliver on this? Uh, as you see here, uh, the Nordic model is, uh, it, it has certain uh, variations and uh, Norway is uh, not uh, uh, the best guy in, in the class here. If we look at coverage of collective agreements in private sector, around half of the workers in Norway are covered. It's more in Sweden, but in none of the countries uh, uh, you will find waterproof systems. Sweden and Denmark don't extend collective agreements while Norway has started to do this. I'll say a few things about that. When it comes to dealing with uh, low-wage competition, social dumping, the previous government in Norway had uh, quite an active policy. They teamed up with the trade unions. They had action plans, and com large uh, uh, action plans against social dumping. Uh, I'm not reading through all these uh, points. Uh, Unfortunately, <laughs> I'm sorry, Erna Solberg, she was on the bottom of this uh, <laughs> slide, but uh, we have a new government from, from uh, last year, and they are saying that they, we know they have a blue, blue government, they, they want to follow up, but uh, there is a clear tendency, of, they are not using the word social dumping so much, but they are more into the labor market crime. It's a bit simpler with labor market crime because everybody is against it. When it comes to social dumping, it's still a bit unclear what is it. Fafo evaluated the, the government's, uh, previous government's action plans against social dumping. And what we found was that, well, there was a kind of good integration in the plans. They both had uh, strengthened the regulations and enforcement, strengthened the labor inspectorate, their, their means of uh, punishments, etc. So our conclusion was that this measure had the positive effect and there would have been more social dumping with all these measures. But we had a very strong conclusion in saying that this was uh, indeed the case in areas where we had extended collective agreements, where there was a minimum wage floor, but less in the other uh, areas of our working life, of, of the labor market. So, uh, just a few words on this extension of collective agreements, almenilti forklaring, eller almenjøring av tariffavtaler i Norwegian. Uh, it's a novelty in our regu regulatory system. We only started using it in 2004. And the purpose of this act of extending a collective agreement is to protect foreign workers against social dumping and to, to, combat, to, co to combat unfair competition. So far, we have uh, this uh, mechanism in place in four sectors, in construction, shipbuilding, agriculture and cleaning, and it's on the way probably in uh, the fish industry, elect uh, elect for electricians, in the uh, road transport, and 
well, maybe even more to come. It's only wages and some individual uh, provisions that are extended. This is a kind of, it's a, in Sweden it's definitely a breach with the traditional model, even in the Norwegian context, it's been controversial. Wage should be bargained, not decided. But here it's a system where you base it on the bargained wages. So what are the experiences? Some of the employers, they are very positive, like in um, building, construction and the cleaners, uh, cleaning sector. In the shipbuilding, they hate it. They have sued the state several times and it's been uh, some very exciting runs in the court where, where they have lost. Uh, so, so among the trade unions, they also, some of them, quite skeptical, especially due to the fear of free rider problems. So far, in these sectors, this has not materialized. Actually, the, uh, the fact that you have a generally binding collective agreement has turned out to be a tool for recruiting migrant workers. Although the unions have complaints about how the system as such is functioning, it's a very long procedure, etc. When it comes to migrant workers' wage, it's uh, quite clear from research that uh, it uh, keeps wages up, that they would have been lower without it, but uh, we still see wage difference that can't be solved through this, uh, this uh, mechanism with, uh, with uh, migrant workers' wages being lower than the average native uh, wage, but uh, uh, then uh, mostly, in, in some, it varies, but uh, those who are in kind of regular employment, they mostly have uh, at least the minimum. But it's not, some are vulnerable. This is uh, data from 2010 among Polish uh, construction workers in Oslo. Here we found that 20% uh, or about one-fifth were below the, the statutory minimum wage in construction. But uh, those most affected of malpractices were posted workers, those who were not uh, not uh, employed in a more ordinary com uh, company. To sum up, in Norway, you could say everybody is against social dumping, but it's still disputed what social dumping is. What is the borderline between acceptable and unacceptable conditions? Uh, collectively agreed uh, minimum rates are uh, accepted as a kind of threshold uh, or benchmark between dumping and non-dumping, uh, but not by all employers and uh, not, uh, not by all parties, um, political parties. It's no doubt that the extension of the collective agreements has been the most important tool. Uh, some some uh, argue that we should have a general statutory national minimum wage in Norway. This is very, very controversial. The, the unions oppose it strongly, and so far it's, uh, it's uh, coming from the right side of the politics and also from the more, most liberal-oriented uh, uh, employers' association. We do have unsolved problems. Uh, the situation is better than it used to. Well, it looked very, very bleak for a while. Uh, quite a lot has been done to strengthen things, but... Uh, uh, this is uh, quite, well, it's not, I didn't have to look long in my notes to find these uh, quotes, so unfortunately. Okay, thanks. Thank you. Mm. So I'm going to change uh, to the next uh, presentation, just, just to get your comments again, I think. I think first, uh, what astonished me were the, were the numbers. I was not, before I heard your presentation, aware that the differences are so large. The Norwegian labor market is uh, like half the size of Sweden, and you have almost twice as many uh, labor, markets in the, labor migrants in this uh, category. I, I just wanted to, 
you, to reflect once more on this issue you said of the difference between the, the Labour Party-led government and the now in place blue-blue government who are focusing on labour market crime? Is there a fear among trade unions, for instance, that they would only focus on trafficking or forced labourers and like the, the worst cases of abuse and ignore other cases of abuse and, and, and indeed well, social... Well, they, they define labour market crime much wider, so it's okay. like... Uh, uh, undeclared black work in construction. It's, so it's not the, like just the extreme cases. So far, my impression is that the unions try to go along. They see the positive in the, they are strengthening certain governmental agencies, etc. So, so it's not been like a conflict. So it's more looking at it a bit from the outside. You can see there is a rhetorical shift, but we don't know yet whether this will really mean much in politics. I just want to add that when we look at the numbers, also other other nations than these the plates uh, uh, I indicated here, uh, we have a lot of Swedes. <laughs> the migration has doubled, and also from the old uh, EU countries. Mm. Hmm. So a lot of migration. Yeah. Thank you very much.